Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, and I hope you enjoy the videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all the questions. They really inspire me and make me do more research and just try to find answers for yourselves. So today I'm going to talk about what options you have if you're not yet ready to do your ASVAB. And it's a question that I receive a whole lot of times um, on comments, on DMs. Some people send me messages on Facebook um, because they want to know what other options they have because let's not even deceive ourselves. Doing OSPAP is an incredibly expensive thing to do. It is expensive, it is time consuming, but the rewards are so worth it at the end of your course. But um, not everyone has the finances to do it at this time. Some people still kind of want to come to the UK in the meantime time and see what options they have. So today I'm going to try and answer the questions, but just bear in mind that I don't have all the answers because there are so many different options. They always change the immigration rules or immigration laws. I know in January of 2021, they're going to bring in some changes, but I've heard that they are good changes. Maybe when they do announce these changes, then maybe I can do a video um, talking a whole lot more about what the options are for people who want to come into the UK and who are pharmacists but don't yet want to do the OSPEP. Okay, I'm just going to try and explore some options that are available but bear in mind that I have not done these options. I don't know many people who have done these options. They're just things I looked for based on research. Okay so all right, let's get into the video. So as I said doing the OSPEP it's not easy even financially, mentally, physically, it is stressful. But if you do want to come to the UK, I know one option would be, and I guess this option would be if you have the finances, but some things are limiting you, maybe things like IELTS or some other unknown things. Let's say you still wanted to come to the UK. Of course, there are other classes that you can do that might be science-based or pharmacy Based. For example, you could do um, a course in healthcare management, you could do an MSc there, you could do an MSc in public health, you could do any MSc that you fancy. You can actually do an MSc in pharmaceutical sciences or any pharmacy related courses. And I guess the aim of doing that will be to then get the two year post-study work visa fingers crossed they still bring it and leave it because when you get your post-study work visa which is two years it means that you can work right um even if you don't have a sponsor which is great isn't it um unless they make any changes to the rules hopefully they don't but that's the essence of a post-study work visa it gives you that um time and that um slight freedom to be able to work in a place without that employer sponsoring you because sometimes the difficulty in getting a job is that you might find jobs but they might not be willing to sponsor you and that's where there will be the challenge but if you have a post-study work visa you won't be able to do that so that option might be there where you can then work for two years um, and save up some money and in between that time then you can switch to a student visa. So you can either switch in country, but I don't know what the rules are. You might still need to find out from the gov.uk website to know what the rules are if you want to switch from a work visa to a student visa when your two years are up, or you can go back to your home country and reapply as a student. Okay, so that's that option. And it's, <sighs> it's not an option I see many people doing because I still feel like if you have the money to do an MSc course, you might as well just be patient and do the OSPAP once and for all. But again, people's circumstances are very different. So that's that one option. Um, you'll be able to find jobs and it will be great if during your MSc then you start looking actively for jobs. You might not be able to work full time, obviously, because you'd have a student visa then anyway. But once you finish, your aim will be to have a job, a good job. And who knows, you'll actually, meet an employer that would sponsor you when your post-study work visa runs out you just never know and but yeah that is one option so the second option would be applying straight for a tier two visa from your home country and then this would be applying to work in pharmaceutical industry okay so you can work as a research scientist you could work as I think sometimes you could work in their sales or you could work as a medical researcher and all that or a fellow or something like that there, there's so many jobs about in, in industry really I've never explored any of them because it's not been in my interest or it's not one of the things I'm interested in but I'm pretty sure that there will be jobs there the issue would be if they're willing to sponsor but I feel like if 
you're already a pharmacist in your country and you have something extra and special to bring that it is possible to actually apply to these companies and hopefully they'll be able to sponsor you and if they're able to do that then yes you can come to the UK you'll be under them working with them and you'll be sponsored and you might as well be on your way to having your resident permit so that is one option and I need to mention this if there are some rules about changing your visa so for example let's say you're working in industry right so you didn't have to do your MSc you just came straight from let's say Nigeria straight to work in the pharmaceutical industry okay so you'd have your um, work visa which usually would be about three years okay but within that three years you're able to stay safe for your OSPAP and as I said once you want to switch to a student visa I think you can do it in country but you have to go on the gov.uk website check for the rules i know there are some very specific rules for switching in country so just make sure you study that because they're quite strict or as i said you might have to go back to your home country and then reapply as a student but that would be possible anyway it wouldn't be an issue okay so another option is looking for a job in the pharmacy sector but it wouldn't be as a pharmacist so with this option it's a little bit difficult because you would need a work visa and to be honest unless it's going to be in a place where they have minimal staffing and they really really need someone who they would be willing to sponsor it'll be difficult so for example you could work maybe as a pharmacy technician or a pharmacy assistant or any other role within the pharmacy um, sector or in hospital or community pharmacy but not as a pharmacist so there are quite a few of those roles I would say personally just go for a pharmacy technician because if that's what if that's what you're looking to do um because it will be closer to what a pharmacist would be as opposed to a pharmacy assistant that would kind of be a little bit too low even salary wise because you would not be able to save enough to do your OSPEP doing that role if that makes any sense you just have enough money to be able to you know leave in the UK unless you do another job but the problem with that option you know is that you need a sponsor and as I said it might be difficult for um, a company who needs a pharmacy technician or assistant or any other role in between to want to sponsor someone because there will be so many people already here in the UK who are willing to do that so it will be hard to get a work visa for that but it's not impossible however if you already have a visa for example if you have a dependent visa or you have a family visa or you just have a visa that allows you to work then that is an excellent um, opportunity to use um, now if you want to be a pharmacy technician it's not very clear what the pathway is but there are so many um, websites which I will leave in the description box below please check it out and they would be able to offer some um, advice to that I know there's the buttercups training mind you you have to pay to be a pharmacy technician as well and you also have to be registered with the GPHC but it's nowhere near as stressful as being doing the OSPAP and the exam and the rest of it but for you to be a pharmacy technician for you to do any of the courses that would help you do that um, you have to be working in a pharmacy so it could be hospital or it could be a community pharmacy so you can't just do the course without actually working so whoever is employing you will be willing to train you within that course even if you're going to pay for yourself most times some employers would be happy to pay for you but others would say you know you pay for yourself and you know it's still fine but you can't do the course unless you're actually working in a pharmacy so that's it but it's quite straightforward I feel like once you just go on the GPHC website there is um, a kind of form and it gives a lot of exemptions to people who are already pharmacists or foreign trained pharmacists so I think if you're not a pharmacist you it takes you about two years to be a pharmacy technician but if you're already a foreign trained pharmacist then it would take you a shorter time to do that course but regardless I think you still have to pay for the course and all that so yeah it's not as I said it's not some it's not an area that I have a lot of information on but I just did some research okay um let me see if there's any other option as far as I know those are pretty much you know some of the options I know um what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a list of organizations that have more information about this where you can get jobs and what you can do okay I'll put it in the description box please check them out um, and I hope it offers you some advice on some of the options that you might have I know it's not an easy journey whatsoever but um, as I said the last option of being a pharmacy technician is usually 
easier when you already have a visa to work in the UK. So like a dependent visa or any other kind of visa that you might have. If you need a work visa for you to be a pharmacy technician, it might be a little bit more difficult to do because there are a lot of pharmacy technicians in the UK, but it, does, it should not dissuade you. It shouldn't um, prevent you from still trying anyway, because you could be applying to maybe a pharmacy that they need technicians and they'll be willing to sponsor you okay so I really hope this was helpful in some way you know as I said it's not an area that I am very um, familiar with because it's all new to me as well like it's not I don't know many people who have done this route um, but yeah I hope that's useful I don't have a lot of information about this because it's not a very popular option but I still wanted to answer it because I know some people are interested and I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you in my next one thank you for watching bye